Greetings, my movie ghouls. Welcome back to our Halloween countdown. 31 films in 31 days. For the last couple of years, we have watched a series from Mike Flanagan. So, when we heard about this series from Flanagan and Lee Fong, we had to jump on board. The Midnight Club is an adaptation of Christopher Pike's 1994 novel of the same name and follows eight hospice patients that meet at midnight and tell scary stories. Every night and make ghosts. Tell stories. Make ghosts sounds better. <laughs> now, my initial thoughts when I realized what this was was that it was like the Midnight Society from Are You Afraid of the Dark on Nickelodeon. Except the kids here are dying of terminal illnesses and there's something potentially sinister going on within the hospice walls. I felt the series started off extremely well. It had solid scares and a good entertaining story. The story follows Ilonka, a teenager with thyroid cancer who enrolls at Brightcliff Hospice in the hopes of finding an unconventional cure once she gets to the hospice, she meets the rest of the group and stumbles onto the group's midnight storytelling. And what I really enjoyed about it is the episodes are crisscrossed with the stories being told. And one of the caveats of the club is that if one of them dies, they have to try and communicate from beyond the grave to tell them that they're okay. The underlying mystery is how one woman was able to leave Brightcliff fully healed with the same cancer that Ilanka has with an underlying appearance of some ghostly characters haunting the group. The other stories told by the group are entertaining and usually have some link to their situations or a basis in their lives. It works well, and I'd argue that these vignettes are the best part of the show. Compared to Midnight Mass, which was Flanagan's vampire epic that discussed the profound questions about religion and death, which clearly took a lot of time to create, this is much lighter and for a younger audience, even though it's still scary. But it keeps the signature scares that Flanagan has perfected throughout his career and from his earlier shows. It's a great way to introduce a younger audience to Flanagan's style of storytelling and horror. But it's not just the horror and scares, it balances it with some good emotional drama, especially when the characters talk about their impending fates. One of the most memorable scenes is that one of the characters talks about one of the things he'll miss when he's gone, and that's the release of the PlayStation. Because the PlayStation did change console gaming forever, and it's acted extremely well and emotional. It builds the emotion, and it makes us like the characters. Another standout is Ruth Codd, who plays Anya, who is a nihilist and initially doesn't like Ilanka to begin with, but comes round in the end, having the best played out storyline in the whole series. My one criticism of the show is that the whole series comes across as sequel bait, not really giving any answers and setting up something for the future. It is entertaining as hell, but it just doesn't have the closure of the first season liked. I wanted to know who the man in the mirror was, who the hungry old lady was, but these answers aren't really done for this series. And I do hope there is a sequel so that I will know these answers in the end. Overall, it's a definite four pumpkins out of five, and I'd urge you all to watch. Have you seen Midnight Club? Does anyone else want to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark, or is it just me? I think it's just me. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and ring that Halloween bell to be notified every time we upload a video in October for our Halloween countdown. Thank you for watching, and remember, sleep tight. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.